based on the title of the video, this little demonstration pretty much says how I feel about watering orchid roots before fertilizing. I advise against it, and I will elaborate hopefully with sound reasoning as to what I do and why, and maybe it will give you an answer to a question you had but didn't know you had it, or weren't sure about as to what is best for you and your orchids. Besides, it gives me the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite structures when it comes to orchids, the roots. Thank you for indulging me. It is good to have you here. The little demo at the start of the video is the sponge being representative of the velamen. Epiphytic orchid roots are covered with a relatively thick layer of dead cells called velamen. The actual root is quite small and located at the center of this structure. The velamen acts just like a sponge and absorbs both water and the nutrients into it. Research has shown that the roots of fowls and 10 other species are almost saturated after 15 seconds and fully saturated after 60 seconds. Ecologically, this makes a lot of sense. And it is important for the orchid roots to capture this right out of the gate. But the loss of water from the layman is much slower and can take an hour or more, depending on how much ambient humidity you have in your environment. My environment falls under the category of dry, which equates to an average year-round humidity of 30%. This, in turn, speeds up the loss of water within the velamen, drying the structure out much faster. Ideally, epiphytic orchids should have an environment of an average of 75% to have the slower loss of water as mentioned, which is around about an hour or more. While the velamen is saturated, what happens to the absorbed nutrients? Well, the velamen is able to hold on to charged molecules, so even when a fertilized root is placed in pure water, the nutrients are very slow to leach into the water. Instead, they are held in the root until they can be properly absorbed and transferred to the leaves. It takes about two hours for the root to absorb all of the water in the velamen, again, depending on the ambient humidity humidity, but this is important to note, because if you water your pots or your mounts first, the velamen will be quickly saturated with pure water. Subsequent addition of fertilizer will not be absorbed by the roots since the velamen is already full. If you're in the process of fertilizing plants, water dry roots with the fertilizer solution and don't pre-wet them. As we noticed, the sponge was completely saturated and when transferred to the next container that simulated the nutrient solution, it is pretty clear that the sponge would not absorb any of that water. The layman being like a sponge behaves exactly the same way. For that reason, when asked, I say do not pre-wet your roots before fertilizing. But I'm not going to diss what other growers do, seeing as there are so many approaches to fertilizing orchids and many of them work very well. But you always have to ask yourself why it works for that particular grower and why when you follow that advice, your orchid isn't growing as vigorously as the grower whose instructions you have taken on board. And of course, where did this idea originate in the first place, as in wetting the roots before fertilizing the orchid? Well, the idea of watering first, then fertilizing, was based upon the old method of fertilizing very heavily, but only once a month or less frequently for that matter. The reason given for pre-watering with water before fertilizing is usually given so as to prevent root tip and or velamen burn. Personally, I have seen velamen burn on my bare root vandas. With humidity at 30% average, it's pretty much unavoidable, even at a lower fertilizer concentration. But for what it's worth, I have not seen a root tip burn where the salt concentration increases as the water drops hanging from the vanda root tips evaporate. So you see, the root tips are able to absorb nutrient water faster than the velamen, which is made up of dead cells, which create a barrier the root tips do not have any velamen around them just yet. In addition to that, any airflow van der roots are exposed to blows off the water droplets very quickly, 
However, whatever is left on the dead cells will evaporate quickly as well, and with that, leave salts behind that were not absorbed. Now that we have had more time and opinions as well as experiences circulate when it comes to fertilizing orchids, the advice out there varies from water first, then fertilizer, to fertilize first, then flush, and also fertilizing a low amount all the time. All will produce results, but are the results what we want? Because this topic of what comes first, akin to the chicken or the egg, can be different for anyone you may come across. What we are trying to achieve by even addressing this question is to avoid root tip burn from salt accumulation, velamen burn from water evaporating too fast, leaving unabsorbed salts on the velamen to burn it and possibly destroy the root's functionalities. And we are also trying to avoid the general buildup of salts within our pots, which is why we should have a regular flushing schedule in our watering regime. What we want to do is fertilize our orchids and ensure that the roots take up the nutrients, or else what is the point? Think about it in terms of what you do for yourself when it comes to eating. Is it better to eat several light meals a day or to binge on food once every several days and starve in between? Should your meals be high calorie slammers, translation for the orchids meaning high nitrogen, or go for a reasonably balanced diet? And if your fertilizer concentration is high, know that the orchid can only absorb so much and the rest is retained in the media. And as that dries up, the mineral concentration increases and can get to toxic levels, compromising the whole root system inside the pot. Basically, what you need to check and get dialed in to know that you are not risking any root tip or velamen burn is how high is your humidity? How quickly do the surfaces of your pots dry out? Keeping in mind that airflow is a key contributor to pot surfaces and mounts drying out too fast, even if your humidity is high enough. The higher the humidity matched with the right balance of airflow, the higher your fertilizer levels can be because the evaporation of the moisture on the surface is marginally reduced, making it possible for the nutrients to be absorbed fully by the velamen. If your humidity is low, then going with a weak concentration of nutrients every time is the way to go about fertilizing your orchids. But in either case, watering orchids before fertilizing them is not going to allow for the nutrients to be absorbed by the velamen in the concentration that you have in your water. The same considerations need to be kept in mind if your orchids are outdoors and getting rained on a lot. Remember at the beginning I mentioned that the first rain out in nature is the most concentrated and that is what the orchid roots are exposed to, right out of the gate before any remaining rainfall serves as a flush. If you're in a climate where it rains a lot, you need to make sure to fertilize your orchids because the nutrient levels are depleted within your pots as well as on any structure your orchid is growing on, be it on a mount or even in the landscape. So what do I suggest and where are possible pitfalls? If in doubt, less is more. Watering with a more dilute fertilizer solution will give you time to observe how your orchids are absorbing the nutrients. And if any salt buildup is starting at the surface of your pots, should that be the case, flush the pot or pots with plain water before the next fertilizing cycle, which, based on your previous observation, will have to be diluted even further. Or you up your ambient humidity. Or you reduce airflow. See how all these factors play a role to get the right balance for optimal nutrient uptake as well as prevent any buildup of salts at the surface that can result in burning root tips and all the velamen. Now, if you are a fan of pre-watering your orchids, you can still do that. I'm not here to change what is working for you, but then I suggest that you up your fertilizer concentration to make the amount of nutrients you are wanting to apply available to the orchid because pre-watering will result in your velamen already being saturated and it will take time for it to absorb the nutrients, which then will also take time to get transferred to the root itself. And then there is the choice of media that plays a role in the pre-watering. Remember that sphagnum moss will hold huge amounts of water and can easily be overwatered by watering twice. When I say watering twice, I mean pre-watering and then fertilizing. That is two doses of water in a single sitting. So, in conclusion, I believe it makes sense to use a weaker fertilizer solution to start with, 
Understand how that works with your environment instead of having to water your orchids twice. Besides, it takes a lot of time to water orchids twice in one sitting. If you feel as though you are caught between a rock and a hard place, you want to avoid pre-watering or fertilizing, then flushing, etc., etc. What I do in my climate is mist the surface of my pots to wash off any possible lingering fertilized water in the hopes that it will prevent any premature evaporation and protect the root tips as well as any exposed velamen from burning. This way the orchid gets the nutrients it needs at a pace that the velamen can absorb them and hold on to them before the root itself can actually do what it needs to do in order to feed the plant. But the misting will help dilute any concentration of salts at the surface of the pots and with that all our bases are covered, for the most part anyway. <laughs> I still get root tip and belayman burn. Most of the time though, that is because of my media taking up moisture from the root tip and not because of fertilizer burn. My enemy in this case is my low humidity in combination with LECA drawing moisture out of everything that it touches in a very dry climate. Sometimes the two do not work well together and I am not misting quick enough in order for my LECA to stay damp at the surface. Oh, and a bonus tip for you if you made it this far. A lot of risks are avoided when it comes to fertilizing if you water your orchids before the temperatures are high, as in early in the morning. This gives the roots time to absorb what you have designated for the orchid. And if it's really, really warm and dry and you need to go around a second time, just do that with plain water and that will be your flush. Sometimes it's just unavoidable in certain conditions to have to go around and water your orchids for a second time but if you've already fertilized then the second time around that is your plain water and in my case the second time comprises of a lot a lot of misting. I don't go flushing my pots on the same day that I have fertilized my pots. That is all setup dependent. I hope that this video was helpful. I won't know if I made sense or made things sound more complicated than they really are. When it comes to orchids, awareness is key and with that we can ascertain what variables work for others and not for us. So let me know in the comments if you have anything you would like to bring to my attention that I can elaborate on and clarify. Because just because you see that I'm growing in Lekka and self-watering doesn't mean that I can't actually relate to the tropics, organic media in clay pots or plastic pots, and now in a semi-hydroponic culture. So throw any questions you have at me. In the meantime, would you please like, share and subscribe to the channel? It really helps keep the channel going. Thank you for that additional support. Thank you also so much for watching. I appreciate your time. I also wish you a fabulous day on the condition that you stay safe though. Take care. Bye.